which is a huge problem for archivists, and we've seen it be a huge problem for a lot of the people that we work with, with smaller publishing houses, smaller, you know, family photos, professional photos that were maybe taken in the 50s, and no one knows who the photo was taken by anymore, so no one knows who the copyright belongs to, is really doing everything that you can to cover your bases and make it the strongest fair use argument that you can. So it's really, um, so for instance, taking the photo and just taking as much as you need to. If you're really focusing in on a specific part, maybe even taking part of the photo and not the entire photo. Another thing that you can do is provide attribution. We find that in a lot of cases, entire problems go away, not because of fair use, not because of a legal argument, is someone just wants to see their name by their own photo. And right. that can honestly make a lot of problems um, go away. Another thing, um, or one last thing uh, that's important is, is really putting it in a new context wherever possible. And I think a lot of the projects are doing a really good job of taking these photos and putting them in this historical context. But the more that you can do to transform it and put it in a new context, I think not only the stronger your project is going to be for archival purposes, probably for grant purposes as well, but the stronger your fair use argument is going to be. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of that is, I just wanted to jump in there, a lot of that is practical. What Terry's yeah. talking about is a lot of that is just simply almost community guidelines, kind of structuring your terms of use in your community guidelines in a way and just creating expectations for how people are going to behave on the service, you know, and saying to people, hey, look, we, we really want to have a, a vibrant sharing community, um, but here's a couple of the things that we want you to do every time, you know, if it's it's not something that you own, then think about, like, what is the purpose, you know, is there really a fair use reason, and, uh, and, and just creating a community that understands the expectations um, that are involved can be really helpful, and then you, you get this, um, you know, you can really have everybody kind of uh, take care of themselves, really, in that way. You, if you set up the right structure, um, that's why when we do terms of use and privacy policies, if it's a heavily interactive site, we often will do a instead of a, you know, five, ten page terms of use, of, you know, fire oh. privacy policy, we'll have a one page community guidelines and just these are the couple of things that you really want to do when you're part of this community. And you can see that um, a lot of services, everything from Yelp um, to Facebook, they, they, try to ha they, they try to have some guidelines for folks uh, to try to create the type of, um, and to, to solicit the type of content and comments that they're looking for. Right, I mean, Heather. I wanted to welcome you uh, to the to the uh, discussion, and Hi, great to be here. Nice to have you. We just to recap briefly, because it's hard to know where we are when you're in the middle of the conversation. We were just talking about uh, history pin, and uh, as being an example of something that is being discussed even further with the New England Archivist this weekend about taking historical materials, archival materials, and then, you know, repurposing them or making them available to use in these creative ways. And one reason why I was happy that you decided to join our conversation today is because you had this background as an archivist, now you're, and, and the complexity of uh, kind of working with materials hands-on, and now, you know, you're in law school and, and looking towards some of these intellectual property issues. And it might be a good time for you to jump in here and offer us some comments about how you see that, you know, working on, on the two sides of your brain. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, well, again, thanks for having me. And um, I just want to.